What's going on guys? My name is Johnny and welcome back to the shop. This week we're making this dining table. This dining table is made of solid cherry and it's stained with a dark walnut stain. I start with first building the base and move on to working on the top. I would normally do the opposite, but this table is so big that if I made the top first, it would constantly be getting in the way of me making the base. The top and most of the base pieces are an inch and a half thick. All of the boards started as four quarter boards, and I had the lumberyard S3S most of the boards to achieve the final thickness. I kept one board rough sawn at 8 quarters. It was slightly over 2 inches thick, and that's where the 8 legs are going to be cut from. I had just enough extra material where I can mill the legs to exactly 2 by 2 inches. And that's what you've been seeing me do so far. With the legs cut to their final size, I can start cutting the pieces that make up the base assembly. The base consists of 30 separate pieces, and it's all assembled with dowel joinery. I used 3 8 inch dowel and I cut it down to just about 3 inches long. To help drive them in easier, I add a bevel to both ends. I had many more to do than you see here, so I chucked them up on the drill and beveled the ends with a hand plane. Next I can lay out the leg assemblies and mark out the joinery. There are four of these leg assemblies that make up the base. That means there are eight legs and because of this, all the joints need to be perfect so the table doesn't wobble when it's finished. I also mark each joint with a number so I don't accidentally mix up these pieces. Each joint will receive two dowels, and to make sure I'm drilling the holes perfectly straight, I'm using a doweling jig. With all the holes drilled, I can start putting it together. I made sure to add plenty of glue in the dowel holes as well as the pieces themselves. Once the glue is added, the wood absorbs some of it and swells up a bit. That means the holes get tighter and the dowels get larger. In this case, the dowels already had a pretty snug fit, so for the rest of the joinery, I made sure to sand them down to prevent possible mistakes. While that's drying, I clamp together all the long stretchers and trim one end square on the table saw. Then I flip them over and cut the other side to length. Doing it this way makes sure that all the boards are exactly the same length. Next, I added the dowel holes in these parts and glued up the two halves of the base assembly. 
These parts were a bit stressful to glue together. There were a lot of dowels that needed to go in and I couldn't take my time because of the swelling that I mentioned earlier. Thankfully, it all went together nicely for both halves of the base. Once the glue dried, I sanded the base to 220 grit and removed any of the glue squeeze out. Now I can stain the base and, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of staining. Normally I would start the project with the color material that I want the end product to look like. Staining this table to look like walnut is significantly cheaper than actually using walnut. That being said, I actually really love how this table turned out and more importantly, so did the client. With the base done, I can move on to the top. This process starts just like the base with rough cutting the boards to length. The final table length is 84 inches, which is 7 feet. So I cut these to 86 inches. That way there's plenty of material to trim the ends after the glue up. These boards are all different widths, and I wanted to maintain that look for the final table. Like I mentioned earlier, I had the Lumberyard S3S these boards, which means there's still one rough edge. I trimmed that edge off at the table saw, taking off as little material as possible, and adjusting the fence for each board, that way they're all different widths. I then lay out all the boards, and once I figure out which ones look nice together, I number them so I don't mix them up. There are 10 boards that make up the top, and to help with alignment during glue up, I add biscuits. Dowels would also work great here, but a biscuit joiner makes quick work of it. This tabletop weighs nearly 200 pounds and there was still a lot of work to be done after it was glued up. So to make it easier while I'm moving it around for those different operations and to also make it easier to move it into its final home, I'm keeping the top as two separate pieces. Each half has five boards in it and this glue up went very smoothly with the help of the biscuits. Biscuits help a ton with alignment, but they're not perfect. So after the glue dried, I removed high spots with a hand plane. Then I sanded the top with a belt sander with 120 grit, and then 80 grit with an orbital sander. The orbital sander helps get rid of lines created by the belt sander, and the final sanding will be done much later. After gluing the two halves, they didn't quite meet together nicely, so I had to close up the seam down the middle. I raised the top onto two 2x4s and clamped the two halves together to close the seam as best I could. Then I clamped each half to the two 2x4s and removed the longer clamps. Now I can run my circular saw blade down the center of the seam, making sure to remove material on both sides as equally as possible. This cut didn't need to be perfectly straight as any inconsistencies are mirrored between the two pieces and they cancel each other out. This was still a very nerve-wracking process as the tabletop was very close to its final width and I had to take a few passes to fully close up the gap. I got pretty lucky here and after I made all the passes to fully close up the seam, the tabletop was at its final width. With that done, I add biscuits in the seam as well. This seam won't get glued so the biscuits are there to help keep the two halves coplanar over time. Now I clamp the two halves together again and square up one end.
and then I cut the opposite end to the final length. This tabletop is very wide and it will move quite a bit with seasonal humidity changes. To help keep it flat, I want to add C-channel under the table. With the base in place, I can measure and mark out the position of these straps. These will get recessed into the tabletop, and I cut out a groove with the router. I use the C-channel itself as a straight edge guide. The way I'm adding these straps is I'm routing two grooves that the flanges of the C-channel will sit in. It's very important that I measure out properly to make sure these grooves are spaced out correctly so the C-channel can sit in there nicely. Well, I did measure correctly, but I still managed to make a mistake here. And that's because for the second groove, I referenced my router off of the flat edge rather than the round edge of the base plate. That made the groove slightly too far apart. Luckily I caught this pretty early and the groove wasn't at its final depth. So now I can cut the groove properly and I take a few passes to get to the final depth, which was just about an inch and a quarter deep. Now I can drop the C-channel in place to make sure it fits properly, and reset the depth of my router bit so that I can remove the material between the two grooves and make the C-channel sit flush with the wood. Next I had to drill holes in the C-channel because I wanted to bolt it into the wood. I'm using quarter inch bolts and I start with a smaller drill bit moving up to a quarter of an inch. Now I put the steel back in the tabletop and I use the holes as a marker on where I need to drill the holes in the wood. While I'm here, I'll also tap the wood to accept the bolts. The holes in the steel need to be enlarged to accommodate for wood movement, so I go back to the drill press to do so. Doing everything in this order, rather than drilling the steel to its final size and then drilling into the wood, ensures the holes in the wood are perfectly centered with the holes in the steel. These C channels are also holding the two table halves together. So I enlarged all of the holes except the two middle ones that are closest to the seam. Now I can bolt the steel in place using fender washers to spread the load. I only use a couple of the holes here as I don't want to potentially strip the threads in the wood. Although I did a couple of tests and it actually takes quite a bit of effort to do so. Next I sand the tabletop to its final grit of 220. I draw a bunch of pencil lines on top so I can see where I've sanded and I can evenly remove material across the entire surface. 
With the sanding done, I added chamfer to all the edges as well as the corners. Next, I add a pre-stained conditioner to the wood, and that helps prevent blotchiness and uneven coloring when adding the stain. Once that dries, which only takes a few minutes, I apply the stain. And once the stain dries, I add several coats of polyurethane. Unfortunately, I forgot to film how I attached the table base to the top, but I used figure eight fasteners and those are probably the easiest way to accomplish this. And with that, it's all done.